and good afternoon wherever you are joining from. My name is Dr. Adiola Olubaniji and uh, I have decided to come on here today to answer some of your questions. Uh, I did an Instagram live on um, Friday after not doing it for so long and for some of you who have been following me for a while you probably have an idea of what we used to do during quarantine with Dr. Addy and I stopped that for a while after a year of doing that so I haven't done any Instagram live until uh, last Friday so last Friday I decided to hop on here to just have a conversation with you guys I felt like I throw stuff at you guys and say hey go register for uh, the book camp without really actually having connected I haven't connected with you guys in a while and what that resulted into is almost 10,000 uh, people have viewed that uh, live since I posted it and uh, I've I've gotten a whole lot of questions in my DM DMs because people try so much when they can't get hold of me on Instagram, some of them would go to Twitter or they would go to LinkedIn. So I've and some of them have made effort to write me an email, uh, wrote emails to the Stamp Up Foundation, just trying to get the questions answered. And so I thought, okay, maybe I should jump on jump on again today, and take a few questions from you guys as to um, you know Korea and a few things that we talked about on Friday that resonated with you guys. If you are joining us, I see about sixty two people on right now. Can you you tell us where you're joining us from today and uh, I just want to um, know where my audience are tuning in from today uh, where are you tuning in from today uh, so that I get to know uh, also uh, there is a question box um, open right now so I'm hoping today that I'll get to answer uh, 10 questions from you guys so please drop your questions in the question box uh, so that I can start to take questions and Kansas uh, Toronto South Africa um, Canada um, yeah that's great hello from Lagos Nigeria uh, India hello from India hello from United Kingdom oh that's wide we have India we have the UK we have the US oh Australia you guys are still up <laughs> I don't even know what time is it over there this is great for uh, Chicago uh, this is great hi everyone good to have you on here so please use the question box uh, no questions yet I haven't seen any question yet we are headed I'm here to take uh, your questions like I said Uganda Kampala uh, nice I'm here to take questions so drop your questions let's start to I address them so I want to you know as we wait for the questions to come in so I want to probably talk a little bit more uh, from what we had on Friday so what triggered that um, Instagram live on Friday was because one of my mentees I haven't heard from her in a while she had come to the US for a degree in uh, petroleum engineering and a few months after into a master's degree in petroleum engineering she had reached out to me and said dr. Heidi you need to help me I'm not sure if petroleum engineering is going to really yield um, a good job when I graduated when I graduate from this program can you help me really uh, understand what I should do so we had a session and I went through our portfolio and we realized that she needed to really pivot a little bit from petroleum engineering because we realized petroleum engineering jobs were drying up because you know what was going on in the in the online gas industry and we know uh industry 4.0 has nine swim lanes i should probably take a picture of that and share that but i want to share if you're here i want you to come back next week friday we are going to talk about the future of work industry 4.0 all the swim lanes and we are going to brainstorm as to how do you have that to your own career and stuff like that anyway so i went through that session with this uh, person and we talked about our background also what she's passionate about and which direction she think our career should go out of the nine swim lanes we took one swim lane which was the data science swim lane so under the data science is not a swim lane the swim lane itself is big data under big data, you have data science, data analytics, business analytics, you have artificial intelligence, machine learning, you have a lot of dif different things under that big data umbrella. So she picked data science and she went ahead and added that to her degree. And I had another meeting with her yesterday because she's, she says she's negotiating uh, for a job. Like she got a job to give us, a, 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 they gave her an offer. So she was negotiating. So I had a meeting with her yesterday. So I told her that she is the reason why I got on Instagram live because I realized that if I did not, uh, if I hadn't had that session with her, if I hadn't really talked to her, 
when she just recently got into the U.S., she would have spent her entire career in uh, in petroleum engineering, and then come out, and then come and start to ask questions from people like me and say, "Come and help me get a job." The question to you right now is: For some of you, you are looking for admission. You're just looking for admission. You have studied. You have studied something. You just shall want admission and scholarship to leave Nigeria. Let me tell you: People can have American passport and be poor. People can leave Nigeria and come abroad and be living in basement of other people for years. Yes, you can sit there and say, "I shall let me shall start from somewhere." Why can't you start from a better place? Somewhere is starting from somewhere is not enough. Starting from a good place, a better place, a with a clear future, a, a clear a clear vision of if I do this, it's going to yield this, and for the next thirty years, I will have security in terms of good job. I will have be competitive. Nobody will be racist against me because of my accent. Nobody will be racist against me because of my color. Because there are tons of jobs in that area. Why can't you start right? Because what I see with people right now is they just they just blindly enter a program. They enter into a master's program blindly and they'll say, ah, Dr. Adi wants to charge me $100 for that. Can I can't pay $100, so that's a lot of money. $500 for mentorship. Say wait, thing. You know what you're going to, the cost you're going to pay after is that you're going to spend two years to take a degree that is not useful in the industry. That is, or that is not competitive in the industry anymore. Because I'm seeing a lot of that. I've seen, I'm seeing people come abroad and say, ah, I want to do an MBA. And then when I finish my MBA, I will get a job. In, in what area are you going to get a job? Who told you that they are looking for MBA graduates uh, right now? Which company is looking for them? Which industry is looking for them? How much are they paying MBA graduates? Have you done those analyses before you decided that you want to come and spend uh, $80,000 to get an MBA degree? Who did you talk to to make that decision? If you're not going to live in Nigeria, you're not going to go back in Nigeria. Why are you letting your, um, the decision come from your past or what everybody else is doing in Nigeria? Is that competitive where you are going? That's the question here. Number two is this. The curriculum, so I'm still going, I'm going to, okay, five questions in the question box right now, but I'm, I want to talk about curriculum. So for those of you who are here, you're in school, you're in college, you're undergrad, graduate school. Your professor said, take this course, take this course. Take that course. Or the curriculum they gave you is take this course, take this course. That curriculum that they gave you may fulfill 40% of the requirement for a job on the market. The way Industry 4.0 has changed everything today, that curriculum will not fulfill 80% of the requirement for the job on the market. So you would finish, they will give you a curriculum. You go and take the courses. But let me tell you, the way things have changed in the last 10 years, if you only depend on that curriculum and you have no guidance from a mentor or somebody telling you and say, industry, this is what we're looking for. Make sure you take elective from department C and D and get this skill before you graduate. If you only do that cookie cutter portfolio they give you, cookie cutter uh, curriculum that they give you, it is detrimental to your competitiveness and your ability to get a job when you graduate. So if you're in school right now, you are in luck. I want you to look at the curriculum they give you. I want you to look at the entire curriculum and say, okay, if I now finish, what am I going to, what type of job can I get? I want you to analyze to, so that you, are, you have an understanding of what is required because these universities right now, they themselves don't know what is going on in the industry. They are busy. There is a disconnect between our, the university system and the industry, a big disconnect everywhere around the world. The professors are creating their own courses. They're not having a good dialogue with industry, industry professionals, companies to know. So what skills do you want from our students so we can hire them? They're not having those meetings. There is no industrial university relationship to let them know. So the courses they have created for you to take, is that what they need in the industry? Let's be asking the question. So be, for you, so I'm, I'm saying this because I have another person, another client who is, who is a little older than me. She's going to start a PhD in a particular area. And last week she reached out to me and said, Adi, uh, I want to, as I'm going into this program, I just want easy course, so only easy course. I don't want hard to add course. Um, I've, I know I want to take this course. I want to take this course. I want good grades. So I want to take those courses. So I told her, no, you're not going to take easy courses. You are going to take the courses that you need for you to be competitive and get a job when you graduate. If it's hard, it's hard. You must take it. 
If it's easy, it's easy. You must take it. You are not going to base the criteria for taking a course on that it is easy. Because that is what I see a lot of. People say, I want to take this course and this course because everybody just gets a, an A. People that take that course, they get an A. Is that course needed for your... To, 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 is, is, what is it going to add to your portfolio? What skill is it going to give you that you will put on your resume? You're saying it's easy and that's your reason for taking it. And I'm saying to you today, from now on, if you are in school, I want you to change that approach. Anything, any course you want to take moving forward should never be based on the fact that it is easy or everybody is passing it. Are you everybody? You are not going to stand out if you try to fit in. Nobody stands out when they fit in. You are fitting in, you are taking courses that everybody else takes. Because you want to get a 90. Why you not get a 90? In a, in a programming language that is, uh, is no longer useful. You get a 90 in COBOL language or FORTRAN. Everybody is using Python. Your 90 in COBOL and FORTRAN means shit. Doesn't mean anything. Let's take uh, one question. People are trying to join me. Will I be able to get... Uh, Has. This person is asking, will I be able to get a one-on-one -on -one career map session with you in the boot camp? No, the boot camp is not a one-on-one -on -one session. If you want a one-on-one -on -one session to map out your career for you, which I do for people, you can get on the mentorship program or you can get, we have single sessions too. Single sessions where it's me and you will look at your resume. You talk about your interests. We look at the future of work. We say, oh yeah, these are your two options. Now, let's now help you understand what skills are needed using market data. What skills are needed for you to be competitive in that industry? That I have that one on one, but it is this boot camp is going to offer everybody the opportunity to learn that together. So, we are going to do different case studies of let's use this person as a case study, let's use that person as a case study, let's do their own career mapping for them right here. But it will not be like everybody will get like, you know, their own career map. You will get a template. You will get help. You will see how it's done. You will go do that. You will do it because when, when we do career map, I don't do it for you. I help you understand. I equip you with the understanding and I open your eyes to see how it's done and how a recruiter is going to judge you if you're looking for a job, how the hiring manager is going to judge you, how applicant tracking system that your resume will pass through first is going to judge you. I'm going to open your eyes to it. You will see it. It will be clear that this is how they gauge you and everybody applying. Now, let's beat that system. So, we'll, we'll pick it from A, B, C and say we want to beat the first one, second one, third one. Let's beat the three of them using this approach. So, that's, that's how the book cam is going to work. But if you feel like you need one-on-one -on -one tailored to you, you may want to get on the mentorship uh, program. And uh, you, you can come to the boot camp for you to see um, I, what is possible before you go ahead and put a lot more money in there. You want to do, I'm interested in MSc in digital marketing. Please, doctor, is that course competitive? So one thing that people don't understand is you are interested in MSc in digital marketing. Why digital marketing? What did you study in your bachelor's? What country are you going to? Digital marketing right now is competitive in a lot of different company, countries. It is competitive because we have migrated a lot of our services online. Because of COVID-19, some countries are even just opening up after almost two years, right? So how do we do, market, how do we do marketing these days? How do we buy things these days? E-business is taking over a lot of business approach. So for that reason, digital marketing is valid in some countries. But in countries where there, a lot of the people don't have mobile phone, a lot of the people are not obeying COVID rule. If you learn digital marketing, it's still good, but is that what your country needs? So the country, the industry, the pay, how much they're going to pay you, how many jobs are available on the market. There are so many criteria that goes into this determining whether that is a good course. I have not been able to evaluate you enough to say, okay, I've looked at your background. And let me tell you, for a lot of digital marketing program for MSc, they need a, ma a bachelor's in marketing or business administration or, or customer or something related to people before they will actually, that is the criteria for a lot of schools. 
So you have to look at it in the aspect of do I will do I even meet the requirement for the for the MSC in digital marketing? Because you can't just throw that out because somebody told you that. Or somebody told you it's competitive. Is it competitive for the country you are at? Do you have the right requirement for it? Will they pick you? I hope that makes sense. And the times, like I talked about, times are affecting things. Because of COVID-19, digital marketers are cashing in like crazy. When everything goes back to normal, they will still cash in because people like me will continue to use Amazon. We'll continue to use DoorDash. We'll continue to use all of those platforms because it just it was almost two years and it's effective and cheaper. And I don't have to leave my house. So we'll still use them. But some people will go back into physically just being in, in places. Will that affect the competitiveness of that field? A little, but I don't think it's, it's going to go away long term. But you need to evaluate further to really be able to say for sure that that is the path you should go and that you have the right criteria for it. Uh, in terms of background you know everybody's asking the same question i'm about to read this person say i'm about to resume a, a phd in industrial uh, engineering in the u.s industrial engineering is a very broad field there is system engineering there. there's so many different fields within industrial engineering so i cannot i don't know you i don't know what you did your master's in i don't know what you did your bachelor's in you threw that at me I say, ah, is this the right thing for me to do? I don't know. Because I, I don't have opportunity. I don't have the opportunity to evaluate your portfolio for you. Or, or, or sit with you and say, let's look at your bachelor's. Let's tell me a little more about yourself. Did you work after your bachelor's? Where did you work? Oh, your master's, what did you do? Do your master's in? What was your research focusing on? Oh, let me see some of the tools you know how to use. Based on this fact, if, if, you, if you are coming for this PhD, let's make sure that you had one, two, three, four, five things to your portfolio. Your professor is going to, let me tell you, you that you're coming for a PhD. If you're coming for a PhD and you have funding, your professor is not going to change the topic, whether you are asking me whether it's good or not good. Your professor is not going to change the topic because he got the funding and he has to do the work and he has hired you to come and do the work. So there is no change in your, in your topic. But we have to be able to work together to say, I will satisfy my professor's, um, my professor's need, which is I will do my research, I produce the papers, but I know that I need the skills so that I can get this type of job because the industry needs this type of job, they have this type of job and they need this type of skills. Then uh, it, that is where I come in. We will sit down, we will evaluate your portfolio and say, had this one and this one and this one to your portfolio. It doesn't affect what you're doing for your professor, but you are building competence that will be useful for you when you graduate from this program. Let me, you know, I, if you watch my last video, the Friday one, where I talked a bit about how I did it, right? When I did my PhD, I took nine courses. I took eight courses, sorry, instead of two courses. And each of those courses, so the, the things they, the, the courses had it to me, I knew that the skills I went to get for, from those courses, I need them in the industry. I was using those tools. Each of those tools, I used them in my research. I learned statistics. Because I, I learned statistics because I wanted to be able to apply for process engineering roles. And it required a good amount of design of experiment, statistical analysis, regression, and clinical like that. So I took two courses in statistics. I didn't just take the courses to add and say I know statistics. I used those statistical tools in my research. I made sure that my thesis, my research papers, have statistical analysis. If anyone here has read my thesis, you will see regression there. You would see um, uh, sampling, to, uh, sampling t test. You will see all of these statistical methods within my thesis, because not everybody will ask for my transcript. But a lot of time, people will Google me, and my research paper will come up. When my research paper come up, they will see those statistical tools within my research papers, which gives me a check mark of she can be a process engineer. So I don't just want you to say, yeah, I'm going, um, I don't, uh, Dr. Hadio, so is that good? Good is not enough here. If I tell you it's good, of what importance is that to the industry? Do you know the skills you should be getting? Do you know what the industry needs? Do you know the strategies? You can't just say, yes, it's good. It's not enough for you. But the question I have for you is, should you spend four years 
within that program and not get with a mentor and not know what you have to do so that you can get a job when you graduate, you should not do that. The day you get into the US, after three months, you need to find a mentor. Whether you choose Dr. Adi or not is none of my business. But find somebody to sit with you to help you evaluate your portfolio so you don't come here and spend four years. And after four years, you are still are coming to ask us, how are, you, how are you going to get a job? Or, okay, I should, I'll just do postdoc because there's no job. I can't get a job. Uh, all the applications, nobody's calling me back. We don't want you to be in that situation. Okay, so as you are starting your program, start, begin with the end in mind. Start with the plan in your hand. And every step of the way, as you're getting the skills, you are adding it to the tools you are using in your thesis. So that when people Google you, they Google your thesis, your thesis will show them all the tools that you know. Say, hey, she knows how to do that. She knows how to do that. She knows. Let me tell you, the company I currently work for, our CEO read my thesis. He read my PhD thesis. He, he knows the 3D printer that I use for my th PhD thesis. And the first time I had a conversation with him, he was talking to me about that 3D printer that I used for my PhD thesis and some of the things I did, the x-ray imaging I did, everything, he read it. So they knew who they hired. So I'm telling you this, especially for you who are going to be research-based. Don't come to me three years into your PhD. Don't come to me when you have just finished your master's. Come to me in the beginning so that we can strategize on what tools, what stuff should you put within your research papers. So that when people Google you, when you apply for a job, when your research paper pop up, they open your research paper, they will see all the methods you know, know who they will hire you. Because not everybody will ask for your transcripts. They don't want to see your transcripts, but they want to, come, they want to know that you know that method. They will see it in your research. It's online. What is in your research paper? How is that selling you? That research paper you're publishing that doesn't have no statistics, that doesn't have no characterization tools, and you say you're a material scientist, you want a job? I can't see EDX, I can't see, him, uh, what is it called, TEM, SEM, I can't see all the nice analysis, I can't see texture analysis, I can't see all the crazy things that will make me feel like that is a material scientist. In your, you said you published paper. Which paper did you publish? How is that paper going to be the pathway for you to get a job? If you are watching this, please take a snapshot. Help us advertise. Let more people come. Put it on your Instagram story. Uh, tag me that people should come here. We have 20, uh, we have 30, 37 more minutes. Please do us that favor. Tag, tag other people. Tag people. Uh, put it on your Twitter. Put the handle there. Say, yes, everybody come and come. So that we can talk about these things. I'm tired of people, you know, it is, we, we have come, we, we, we will travel all the way from Africa. We will travel all the way from Africa to the US, to Canada. Do you think we have come here to carry last? We have not come to these countries to carry last. Let everybody not be, we have not come here to, you left Nigeria where they has, were spraying money in Obad the other day. I could not run to Obad, go and pick your money. We're in Nigeria, where everybody goes to Owambe every weekend. I couldn't go to Owambe. No, I've not been to Owambe for many years. People are eating fish, catfish, every day, fresh. They have us. They have people taking care of their children for them. They have three, three house help. We are here hustling. You think we have come here to just hustle and not make it? There is strategy to this making hit process. You know, people tell you that ah, researchers are researchers. They are just researchers. So just respect them before because they have a PhD. They are not going to. We will strategize to make it in this country. You have to. You cannot come to this part of the world where you are in Nigeria too. We will strategize for you. You will take over that place wherever you are. You have to take over. There is strategy to take over everywhere. For I'm talking to researchers. I'm talking to people. I say I'm going to do PhD. Your PhD from the day you come to this America, come and pay me mentorship money, or you come on when they want to do this boot camp. Come, let's plan it for you. You cannot come here, publish a paper that is not connected directly to the industry. You have published the paper. When they Google you, they see the paper. The paper is not getting them excited. They are not seeing new techniques within the papers that they are using. They are not seeing. They are not seeing all those methodologies. They are not seeing the instruments that they have within their com companies. They are not seeing it on your on your in your paper. The co the company already bought the instrument. They are looking for people who know that technique so that they can come in and use the equipment. Do you have that equipment used in your experiment? They are looking for people that know certain softwares. 
you cannot you cannot lie on your paper you need we need to strategize on what skills you need so that you can go take those courses by the time you get the skills you go and use it within your papers so when somebody's googling you when you're looking for job let we'll see everything there okay until only phd good luck where are, where, are, where are you going in the u.s let me know Hello, I just finished uh, an MSc in management in Europe. Want to move to the US, Canada for brand management, digital marketing, but, but they require one to be in the country or have worked there. I have a BSc in marketing and three years experience. Don't want to do a PhD to move. How do I, I crack into this field, doctor? You can crack into the field by doing a second master's. Your easiest route is school these days because Canada is uh, extra century is now a little tough and they're not hoping it's not that it's tough. They just paused the program. They're not opening up tracks for people. So I will still say, you know, whatever method they have these days, just still put it in there. Right. But for the U.S., um, if you can do EB2, um, I, I, I talked about EB2 NIW. On this program a while back when i was doing quarantine with dr Adi, you may want to look at the criteria for that and see whether you qualify for it if you don't qualify for it come and do a second masters i don't think except if you're doing very special thing i don't think it's worth it for you to come and have a phd in digital marketing digital marketing doesn't need a phd for you to succeed in its strategies it needs, it needs you to be influential. It needs you to understand how to navigate social media, algorithms, SEO, coding a little bit. I don't think you need a PhD for that. So I will suggest to you that you should come to Canada or the U.S. for a PhD. I think your field doesn't require that. If you were in biomedical engineering, doing tissue engineering, go and do PhD. You are, want to do digital marketing. I don't think you need a PhD. And you, you are looking for a job in digital marketing, but your MSc is in management. Your MSc is not in what you are looking for a job in right now. That is a mismatch. They can't give you a job if what you studied is different from <laughs> you just finished studying that and then you want to go and look for a job in another field. Who, who, pack, who told you that you should be looking for a job in digital marketing? That is way off from what you studied. You studied management. Maybe it's business management or information management. I don't know. If it's not digital marketing that you did your master's in, that is not like, you know, your, 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 your work requirements is already missed, right? Um, so I would say maybe you want to look for an MSc in digital marketing or marketing or something related to that in the U.S. or Canada and apply and see whether you would be able to uh, come through through that option or you can look at the relocation of your permanent residency canada has multiple routes they have express entry they have permanent pmp programs there are multiple programs the u.s has the eb2 niw which may be you have to check to see whether you meet the criteria uh that would be oh audio problem can you guys hear me somebody said they have audio problems can you can, can everybody hear me I see the love. Thank you all for the love. I love love. <laughs> okay, so uh, somebody said they can hear me. Uh, I, I don't know. I think we've taken four questions right now. Hey, this one. Please, what career paths can I go into? I have a master's in public health. Intend to do a PhD. Ha, this public health thing. You know, public, you know, I, 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 I tell people all the time, public health is a very nice career path, but public health, it's, it differs, right? There is program side of public health where all the things they're doing is uh, health strengthening, health program management, health beware, and there is a little bit statistical analytics part of um, public health. They would be doing health, uh, um, health analytics they will be working on epidemiology biostatistics we'll go like that they will do the people who do program management they should have a little bit of the analysis side of things to make their work easier and make them a little technical obviously does that need a phd i don't think so 
I think I think that doesn't probably require a PhD though. Like I well, but yeah, you may want to do a PhD. It's it's allowed, but in countries like Canada, I don't think that needs a PhD. In the US, if you get a PhD, you probably go and work for NIH, Dr. Fauci people. <laughs> you probably can get a job, but somebody with a master's degree can also get a job. Now, public health, as I said, there are multiple sides to it. There is the manage management side, health strengthening. And book well like that, program management, analyzing, can you small, small. There is the analytics piece. They, they are doing Python there, they're coding everything. They're like the analysts, analyst, analytics people. Now, you have to think about it. Where, where are you? Are you on the analytics side or the management side? If I don't know that, I can't really say for sure, go or don't go, right? If you're on the analytics side, maybe you can add a few things to your public health. You can add machine learning, you, or you can add hey, hi. Oh, yeah, but it's okay. Yeah, you did, you could do a PhD and get away with it. If you're on the other side, management, me, I will not tell you to do a PhD. With a master's degree, you get a job. You are okay. Not everybody will get a PhD. Dr. Adding didn't get a PhD because she just wanted to. I got it because I, I studied biomedical engineering with specialization on synchrotron x-ray imaging and tissue engineering. 3D printing is crazily hard. For you to for you to make a cartilage tissue with cells inside it and put it inside a human being and that become a part of their body forever, you need to do clinical trials. You need to start from bench tests. You go into in, in vivo on small animal. Then you move to large animal. Then you move to human. The stages are tremendously crazy. FDA or Health Canada will not approve anything that goes into human body if it's not scrutinized properly. I needed a PhD. That's why I got one. I didn't get it because somebody just said, go or don't go. I analyzed my career. I looked at it and said, based on this track, if I don't get a PhD, I can't lead those clinical trials. I can't be a principal investigator for that. Oh, uh, oh yeah, they will trust me with that with a master's degree. Oh, yeah, I need to be able to be an authority in this space. I need a PhD. I'm dealing with human bodies. I went to put this in their bodies, not just in their mouth. It's in their body. It goes into the bloodstream. That's, that is a PhD. So you have to ask yourself, what you are doing right now, do, does you need a PhD is the question. Because people expect that because I have a PhD, I should tell everybody to go get a PhD. Some people don't even need a bachelor's degree. They are fine without a bachelor's degree. Because what they're focusing on does not require that. Some people just need two-year diploma. Plumbers, electricians in Canada or the U.S., they make more money than a lot of people wearing suits. They only have diplomas. And Johnny Mann certificates, and they're good, they make good money, they live in mansions. Some people don't need a PhD, some people don't need a bachelor's, but some people need do. The question is, do you need a PhD? Okay, again, you need if you want me to really, you know, look at your pro, what you've done, look at your CV, say, okay, oh, based on what you have. I think a PhD is right because we will analyze it, we'll do market research for you together. Where you are the one leading it, I'm directing it. And you are, you've done it and come back and say, yeah, Dr. Adi, actually, there, nobody, I don't need the PhD. We will be, it will be clear to both of us that you don't need the PhD, but you need to get this skill and this skill and this skill and this skill. And then we'll discuss how should you, how should you go get it now? Some people do, some people don't. But I don't know which part of public health you belong, so it's a hard decision to say yes or no. Like I explained, if it's the analytics side, if you're going to have some complexity to it, maybe a PhD is not a bad idea. If I was on the program side, I think experience is experience, influence, and people that you know matters a lot more. I think with a master's degree, you're good. Next question. How many questions have we answered? Who knows? How many questions have we answered? Is anybody th keeping track here? Please don't leave your question in the comment. Put it in the question box. We have a question box. And oh, we have had more than three. Five. Yes, five questions. Ah, three. K. Thank you, Lobby. I have a session. I have a mentee coming on at four. So please. We've done five. We have five to go. Um, I, I wanted to say, put your questions in the question box, please. Don't put your question on the comment because it's going to be hard for me to read it. If it's in the question box, I'll be able to pull it up. We will all see the question and we will all be able to read it. Uh, okay. 
Oh, okay. I see that. What, what I see here is, so people, people that put question, you can go into the question box and like their questions. If you like their questions, the questions that the questions that have the most like, we will focus on, on, on like, on working on those because they have the most likes. And that is how I've been picking questions. The questions with the most likes get answered. So if you're here, you want to understand how do I do my own skill map? How do I map my skill? How do I understand like, okay, I need to map my skill. Whether you're working already or you are a student or you're about to go into school, you want to map your skills so that you can make sure that you, you have clarity on what you should get for you to get promoted. What skills should you get for you to actually be more competitive at the work you're doing? Or what you should get so that you can be able to go apply for a better job. Or what you should get before you leave college so that when you're about to leave college, you can get a job. I, would, I want to encourage you to apply. You should register for the boot camp, the Career Competitiveness Boot Camp. Because that boot camp is the cheapest way you can have access to me where we get work together on this. It's the cheapest way. Because I know not everybody can pay the $500 for mentorship. It's $100. So it's the cheapest way to get what you need that will be useful for you. You will thank me later. Especially for those people who are in university right now or you are looking for a job right now. You're not getting an interview. You need to register for that program. You will thank me later. Because you will have clarity as to, ah, is this how they evaluate me when I'm looking for a job? Hey, hey. So, me, I know now. I will, I will answer everything the way I know that there are no bonding. I will pass through all the three stages successfully. Uh, or for those in school, you will go to school every day knowing fully well why you are here. You will go to school every semester picking the right courses that will add to your portfolio. Nobody will put, after that, after that boot camp, no professor will ever push you around again. After that boot camp, you will be smart about where your career is going that no professor will push you around. Nobody will just use you to collect paper because that's what they're using people for. Professors will get their own funding. They will hire you to come and do the work to better their own career. It will better your own career too because you publish papers. But what use is it if you cannot get the skills for you to now get a very good job when you finish? Some of you are here, you have, you have, you love your professor. I love my professor. It's so good to me. It's so good to you because it's, you are helping him with his career. That's why it's so good to you. It has to be good to you now. You're publishing papers that will help him with his career. That is his own career. Your professor is not in the industry. Your professor is not working in tech. So he doesn't know what you have to do for you to get a job in tech. He doesn't know what you have to do for you to to be competitive in the industry. It cannot offer you what it doesn't know. I'm sorry, professors, but that's the truth. So you need a career coach like myself to tell you, do this, do this, uh, do that for your professor, but you be doing this too on your own so that when you finish, let everybody know that you will get your own job. Because when I was at U of S, some people know the, the people, the, the smart, they were winning all those skinny, winning all of it. Me, I just focus on my focus. I'm here to do my research, to get my courses, to put those courses within my thesis. If you ever read my thesis, my, the title of my thesis has 3D printing as part of it. Every study I had had 3D printing as part of it. Did you see, did you, did you hear that? Three, no, I put everything in there so that when I'm looking for a job, people will have a 3D printing experts. That's because that's where I need to go. My PhD is not, is in biomedical engineering, biomedical engineering. That's what I got my PhD in. But I strategically make sure 3D printing is everywhere in my thesis. So when I'm going into the industry, 3D printing industry, they will not get confused and say, I should be biomedical that she did. No, no, let everybody call it blame. It's 3D printing. Oh, please, be cool. Put me there and give me my job. Some of you, we need to package you like that. You are packaging, you know, you are, not, you are not doing anything bad to your professor. You are still doing their job, but you are doing things that would be clear that that's the path you want to go and then get your job. Oh, yeah, next question. Ah. Dr. Adi, please give me 
Can you give discount on the mentorship program? Thank you so much. This got how many likes? Uh, it got 18 likes. Ah, 18 people. Oh my God. It got 18 likes. What's that person asked for? <laughs> discount. Oh my God. Everybody wants a discount now. Okay. I'm going to talk to my team after we are going to give you guys 20% discount. 20% discount. Everybody. For the mentorship program, you're going to get 20% discount. For the boot camp, I'm also going to give you guys 20% discount. Okay, I hope that's good enough. So for boot mentorship and um, boot camp, you'll get 20% discount. Uh, I'll tell them to print. We will make flyers. We will uh, get them put out latest by Tuesday, 20% discount. Yeah. Let the people that did come here still pay. <laughs> But you that have asked for it, you get 20% discount. All right, next question. Uh, like I said, go and vote for the question you have answered because we have four more questions. I okay, next question with 10 likes. I have um she, she said, I have I am I have an admission to start human resource management certificate course in Canada. For my undergrad, I read economics and business administration for my master's thesis what, what my master's thesis was hr based is hr certificate good oh my god hr is not a bad field in canada i think hr is not bad but hr has different dimensions there is one of the most competitive hr area that i know is compensation management it's company that i want you if you're in hr you are here i want you to go and write down compensation management or compensation analysis that part of hr is quite lucrative you will get paid well there are jobs because it has a little bit of analysis with it you will so i'm saying this for you that say i'm coming for H, uh, human resources management make sure that your curriculum on human resources has to be defined the school cannot just give you one cookie cutter human resources portfolio that will not get you a job well make sure that you know what you are coming in there for you have five tools of or, or like these are the functional areas i need to have functional area one i just mentioned it comp uh, compensation uh, management or compensation analysis i i know a couple of other functional areas for 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 fun for human resources but i only want to give you people one for free today <laughs> so we have to put together the functional areas like at least four functional areas that i know that in the u.s and canada they are competitive for human resources those must be in your portfolio if that certificate program already said this is the course you want to you have to take you have a right to take electives so the compensation analysis i just mentioned and other ones that are possible that are very good functional areas for human resources experts, you have the right to ask the school to take those as electives. Once you take those as elective, then when you are looking for a job, it stands out in your resume, bagam, good job, six figures. Let me tell you this, one of my mentees, very nice client, moved from Nigeria. When she was moving from Nigeria, she said, ah, doctor, she registered for mentorship and said, doctor, I want a six figures job. HR person. I said, Pico, you never learn Canada. You don't the tell, you don't tell your mommy that you need to get six figures salary. She said, Doctor, I know we can do it together, me and you. I can't come to Canada and be working $40,000, $50,000 job. I need you and I to put together a process for me as an HR person to get a job that will at least give me $100,000. Do you know that we got an offer for her before she left Nigeria and it was over 90,000? We didn't hit 100, but we hit 90. HR person. Why? Because we focus on the portfolios. We extracted the portfolios that can give money. And that is what she wanted to sell under HR. Why am I telling you? HR certificate can be broad. You need to narrow down to where competition is very low because they don't have experts in that that is where you need to focus on we got her an offer she she had two companies that liked her she, she ne this girl never enter canada offer don't they they wait for her but let me tell you 
You could talk to some experts in HR right now and they make 50,000. Or and they can tell you there are no jobs because there are different areas in HR and some areas are lucrative right now. You just need to know which one so that when you go to this program, you don't go and waste your time to collect a certificate focusing on the area that is not lucrative. Okay? Uh, uh, four years, Soji said you are in Winnipeg. You, did you send me a DM? I'll write your name down and we will check it and get our response out to you. Thank you. The, the boot camp to register for the boot camp, the link is in my DM. If you are in Nigeria or other parts of the world that you don't have PayPal, you, if you can use flutter wave, we have a flutter wave link. So we, I can, we can send you the flutter wave link. Or if you want to pay into Naira account, just send us a DM and say, I can't use PayPal. For the book camp a lot of people have paid in fact we have more people paid into the naira account than are registered by paypal feel free to reach out via uh, dm and my team will respond to you if you want to pay with naira people can you please talk more on the book camp? what's it about so the boot camp is going to focus on skill mapping so skill mapping so let's say you're working today you're working as a business analyst when you're working, your company just make you do a, pass, a particular portion of business analysis, not everything. We will map your skills so that you would know within your industry what, how much skills are there that you should know for you to be a competitive business analyst. analyst. Let's say you're in school. When you, we will talk about, based on what you're working on, how will you know what the industry know, need for you to be able to get a job? I will walk people through that skill mapping process. So everybody will get a template and develop their own skill map so that you know exactly what you need to go and learn in terms of skills. That if I get the skills, definitely they will call me for interview. I will also walk you through how recruiters analyze you. ATS, six second rule, how hiring managers analyze you. A lot of times people will say, oh, I, I, I know how the ATS works. The ATS is not the only thing they use. Once you pass through the ATS, you, they use the six second rule on you. If you don't pass the six second rule, it's over. Your resume still go into the garbage. I will walk people through those process. So, you know, this is how they analyze me when I'm looking for a job. So I know that I have to escape the ATS, the six second rule. And this is how I will present myself to the hiring manager for them to pay me more. Or for them to get excited and even even hire me at all so i hope that makes sense so for those in school the skill map will show them the skills they need to get when they are still in school for those already out of school they will understand this is the scope of the work i'm doing but this is everything i need to know to call myself a specialist in this field the reason for that is because you may be working for a company they only make you do this tiny piece and tomorrow they fire you now they fire you want to look for another job now you can't get another job because you only know very small portion of the entire portfolio so you can't get a job because you know 30 percent of the entire thing is too small or you want promotion the reason why they are not promoting you maybe because you don't where you are right now you're not even impressing them enough because you don't know enough there you don't have enough skills to impress them so this will help you to really understand that and this will not be dr hadis said so data said so we will use data to make every decision you will by yourself from that moment understand the power of data because it's not a mentor that said go and do that learn that data from multiple companies is telling you that i hope that helps um and the human resources person who have answered your question what is your advice for an accountant taking a course in data analytics Sorry. Why data analytics is my first question. Why did you choose data analytics? And number two is, I, so I, I have a lot of accountants within my terrain. My husband is an accountant, by the way. So I have seen accountants had technology into their portfolio because I, I related with a couple of accountants around me. I think a course in data analytics will help everybody. Whether you're an accountant, whether you are an engineer, whether you are HR, any course in data analytics will only add to your portfolio. With data analytics, you will understand how do I 
really present a data, show trends in what is going on, help the company understand how many so let's let's talk about trends a little bit here so let's say you work for a company they are analyzing social media data with data analytics tools like like the visualization tools you'll be able to tell the company how many how many minutes are people spending on their website how many of those people are buying products in a way that is pictorial in a way that is easy for them to understand i'm saying this that as an accountant as a pilot as a physicist as a tissue engineer as an hr person as a as a uh, social media manager you need data analytics data analytics should be a universal skill that all of us should get now if you are on here and you are interested you are wondering where can i start from stem hub foundation my non-for-profit where we give everything out to people for free <laughs> we are hosting data analytics course for three saturdays starting from next saturday i will post that flyer right after this meeting it is for three saturdays the person teaching it is a very very smart data analyst who lives in texas we are paying her for that but this program is free to you because the government of Canada has sponsored it. So they have paid it for you. So we're paying her for that to teach data analytics for three Saturdays for free. She's going to be teaching SQL and she's going to teach Power BI. Power BI is very good, especially when you're thinking about analyzing data, visualizing the data. With SQL, you can query your data. So those two combinations together, awesome for anybody who is trying to enter into data analytics and use them as a tool to make your presentation better, to make your work neater, to make you feel like you are some expert in, uh, in something like that. Come and do it for three Saturdays for free, paid for by the government of Canada. Thank you for asking that question. Like I said, not only accountants need data analysis, analytics knowledge, everybody, including myself, needs it. So as an accountant, yes, add that to your portfolio. Is that the only thing you can add? No at all. There are so many other tech areas for accountants today that are balling, that are awesome, that are like great. But that one is one to definitely add. Thank you. So this person got a lot of vote as well. I have a bachelor's degree in law and a master's in law. I want to go for a second graduate degree in the UK. What course should I take? This person is to sit down with me so that we can talk about where, where, what is your end goal? What is your end goal? Are you trying to be a consultant here? Are you trying to be a tech lawyer here? Are you trying to, what are you trying to be? I need to understand law is why you just say you study law. Did you study commercial law? Did you study humanitarian law? Did you study tech law? What did you talk about? Do you think I don't know? This is a vague question that you just asked me. You want to go for a second master's. Why do you need a second master's? We need to figure out what area of law are you? Which country are you trying to move to? What is lucrative there? Before you go to that program, you should come and do a one-on-one -on -one with me. You need it. If it is commercial law, under commercial law today, we have tech law. We have different types of law. Where do you want to, which one do you want to focus on? Are you trying to be a, a lawyer, an attorney, or are you trying to be a consultant? That's another thing too. So before you say, I'm going for an MBA, I want to do project management. You have to, where, so if you want to end up in the US as an attorney, for example, then we can talk about maybe, all right, maybe you should, maybe you don't need any of that. Maybe you need something else because I know the path for lawyers to come to the U S and become attorney, um, which is a story for another day. If you're going back to Nigeria after that degree, there is, that is another ball game. If you are going to move to Canada, if you're going to stay back in the U S in the UK, that's another ball game. So before you make that decision of, should I go and learn data analytics? Why? Because commercial law is wide. And are you, are you, do you want to be an attorney or a consultant? I like that you're thinking that you want to have uh, industry 4.0 areas. But the issue is where do you want to end up? Which type, which side do you want to be, attorney or consultant? All of those should influence that decision to go for a second master's. Nigerians, Africans, and everybody around the world who are like, especially black people, have continued to go to school without asking why. 
Why do I need that? How does that fit into my big picture? How does that affect my five-year goal? How does that affect my bottom line? In 10 years, is that going to give me a leverage today that will be valid in 10 years? If that three years or two years and a lot of money that you want to spend in the UK is not something that will give you a leverage here and it will be valid in 10 years, don't do it. Before you make any decision of going anywhere, ask those why. Sit down with people. Where are you going? What's your future plan? Do you want to move to Canada in two years? Do you want to move to the US? Uh, you're dating a guy in the US. He asks you to move. So if I do this and do this, when I move, I'll be able to do this and do that. I want to move to the UK for this master's, but I want to stay back. Let's analyze what is what is what are the opportunities for lawyers in the UK? Are they following the consultant or the attorney route? What is the attorney route like? Which area of law is lucrative in the UK? Is commercial law lucrative? Is he as, as broad as that? Oh, so under commercial law, some people are doing mergers and acquisitions. Acquisitions. Some people are doing tech laws. There are different of type of things answer, uh, uh, happening under that commercial law that you just mentioned. Which area do you want to focus on before you go and do the analytics? I know. Next question. All right, some but people are saying, answer my question. Let's just go through and look for, we're not going to just look for the ones that has too many likes. People, um, so, this is actually a very interesting field <coughs> and very good, but it depends on where you want to go. So every part of the world right now, gender is a big deal. Gender is a big deal because gender is a big deal. So when you want to study gender, but you have to really understand under gender, there are issues that are being looked at right now seriously. Issues of rape, issues of the domestic violence due to lockdown. There are so many different issues that the government are funding for women. When you want to study gender, you have to specialize in areas that are innovative, revolutionary, and really of concern where you are going. If you study those areas with a little bit of tech added, you have to add some tech these days, yes? I think it's a good field. I think gender studies is good, but we need to make sure the areas you're looking at and targeting it's a good area and not just something that they've, they've been researching for 30 years. Let's talk about a bit about millennial. Millennial women these days, right? We have our issues that we're going through. Depression is one of them. Uh, loneliness is one of them. People don't want to have a child these days. Like there are so many issues that are going on with millennial, especially the women. There is fibroid, especially um, black women are prone to having more fibroid than everybody else. Black women are prone to having cervical cancer than, or dying from cervical cancer than everybody else. Those are gender issues that has to be talked about and some countries are funding them big time. So you have to ask yourself, what country am I trying to go into for my PhD or my masters? What issues are they funding today? What schools are available? What professors are available? Can I connect that issue with my background as an African? Can I connect that, that issue with my background as a black person? So that they can see that I'm not only interested in this issue, this issue concerns me. I'm a black woman. Black women, they're dying from fibroid. Black women are the ones that die the most from cervical cancer. So I want to do a study on understanding why black women are dying from, from cervical cancer the most or something, you know, if, if that country is interested in that, it's easier for you to get funding, right? And that, that field, definitely, if that country is interested in that, you'll be able to get a job when you graduate. Hopefully, that helped. So, I'm currently studying biotechnology at master's level in Europe. Biotechnology is also wide. There is biochemistry there, there is bioinformatics there, there is um, microbiology there, there is anatomy and physiology there. Biotechnology is wide. I need to know what area of biotechnology you are focusing on. This is, a, this is an area that I know a lot because I'm a biomedical engineer. But I can't give you an advice because you didn't, you're not that specific with your question for me to know what type of advice to give you. Well, if there's anything you need to, to really think about as a biotechnologist is you want, you want to make sure every research you are working on as a biotechnologist has a direct implication on the industry. There is an industrial connection. So you want to make sure of that. If there is one advice that I'll give you based on the fact that I don't know 
I don't know your field particularly. Guys, it's already one hour. My aim was to come on here and spend one hour with you because I actually have a mentorship session right now with somebody. And you know, they paid me. So <laughs> they paid me. So I, I, I have to show up on, for the session. Thank you to, we have two, we, we, we lost about 20, 30 people. We, we have about 258 of you right now. Thank you to the 258 uh, of you who waited till the end of this question and answer. And I hope to get to do this again. Uh, hopefully, I'll do it again on Friday. We will t on Friday, we'll talk about digital transformation, industry 4.0 tech you know we will talk about that a lot on friday uh please stay tuned please tell somebody when i will post this video please make sure to share this video with other people please come to the boot camp come to the boot camp if i can give you this much for free imagine how if you pay me that hundred dollars i would just be dropping it back 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 i want i want you to know something what you don't pay for today you will pay for later you may not pay me that hundred dollars to get information you need to advance your career right now. But later on, when you're going through the job and everything is tough and there's headache, there's headache payments later. Don't wait for headache payments. Pay me now. Let's figure it out. Let's go in there and show them what black people can do. You all know I do this because I'm passionate about supporting you. I don't want to just be the only person up there. It is lonely when you are the only person up there. It is lonely when everybody keep praising you. And that is why I want to make sure that I can carry everybody along, at least as many that I can carry under my wings, that I carry you with, I carry you with me, so that up there will not be lonely for me. And that we, we would show other people that we can actually replicate success, that it is not luck. We can work through the strategy and we got supporting us. We can duplicate, we can replicate success among young black people, among Africans, and the people who look like me and you will come to this country, will become multi-millionaires, and that nothing can stop a person that is determined. Nothing can stop a person that strategizes. Thank you for rolling with me today. God bless you. Take care.